Howdy, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is episode number eight of my short subject series entitled Dial Indicators versus Test Indicators. So let's get started. Here is a list of the differences between dial indicators and test indicators. As noted at the bottom, there are probably many, many more differences than what are shown. And you can look at the end of the video where I will put a still picture of this chart in case you want to study it. I have laid out on the bench some of my indicators. Everything to the right of the dowel are dial indicators. Everything on the left are test indicators. Now, to some extent, they both do the same thing, but not exactly. I believe that the dial indicators excel at lathe work and so on, and the test indicators are best for inspection and milling machine work, tramming and things like that, but again, they do overlap. But let's get started here by talking about a dial indicator, but before I do that, let me just say that we used to call these dial indicators, but here is an electronic digital type indicator. To be honest with you, I do not care for these. I do not even have a battery in here at the moment. I much prefer the old analog type, so I'm not going to talk about these. Not that they do not have a definite purpose and they're tremendously accurate. Do you think these will be around in 75 years the same as these? Will the batteries have corroded? Will the little chips fail? I don't know. Here are some of my dial indicators, and I use these really more than the test indicators, but stick with the American brands if you can find them, but they are much more expensive. Well, the, the Japanese is wonderful too, but I was going to tell you, go ahead and get yourself a Chinese one for 15 or 20 bucks, and I was going to show you this example, which I haven't used in a long time, but look, it's sticky. So it needs to be taken apart and cleaned or oiled or thrown away. I'm not sure which, so I'll set it off to the side. Probably the most common size and type of indicator that you're going to run across, no matter what brand, is this type. And it's called a plunger indicator. It reads in uh, one thousandths. Again, the total range is one inch. And notice there's a little revolution counter here, so they actually have two needles or two dials. You can mount them by the lug or by this stem here, depending on what kind of holders that you have. The dial, of course, zeroes out, can be turned around. You can get all different kinds of dials for these. The Sterrett lists uh, pages and pages of different dials that are available, and of course, Imperial or metric. I'm not sure I even have a metric here on the table at the moment. This Mitotoyo indicator has a range of two inches, but that makes it a rather large clumsy dial because this plunger has to be received into the tube back here. And they make these even longer. I'm not sure up to what size, but this is a, a very nice indicator and would be reasonably expensive. Most dial indicators have fairly large dials that are, make them easy to read, but not all. Here is a little federal indicator, and it reads to the tenth of a thousand. Most of them, as I said, are only to the thousand. So not too often will you need one like this in your machine shop, but this only has a range of 250 thousands. So notice that there is no little inner dial, and this one is sticky also. Perhaps the oil has hardened. I probably have never ever used this one. Now all of, although I showed you here the most common size, but again smaller and larger. Here's an Ames, and even though you would think it would have a resolution a little bit higher than a thousandth, you can see that it's one thousandth, but it has an extra little needle here, the red one that can be turned around into different positions. Not sure how that works. I've never used it. I have an older video 
and I'll put the name on the screen here in a moment if you want to look at it. In regards to how these indicators work, but here's one that I took the back off of just to show you that dial indicators generally on the plunger here have a rack. That is, there are teeth, but in this case they are so small, can't even tell what side they're on, but it's a little uh, rack and pinion mechanism along with gears and springs and all that so they are rather complicated and delicate and you don't want to get them uh, wet or rusty or anything like that this is a pretty good one made in where is that made Japan the Japanese tools to me are quite good I will show you a little bit later the construction of a test indicator because they aren't built this way at all. Totally different principle. Some of these are jeweled in the more expensive ones that resist wear. I'll give you a little bit better view of the rack and pinion. So here is the rack and then the pinion kind of hidden down here but this is the shaft for the pinion. So dial indicators are rack and pinion actuated. Here's another small one. This is a Shars, and it only has 250 thousandths of travel. But nice when you need an indicator that's a little more compact than some of these. Here's a dial indicator set made by Sterrett that is the back plunger type. There's a couple of accessories that are missing in this one, but you can see the plunger comes out the back. And these are real handy for indicating vices in and things like that. And again, it comes with all kinds of attachments. We are used to seeing the Sterrett or the General or the, the Central, but I do have in stock a Lufkin. I know it's older because it's a mahogany box, but it has all of the accessories as well and a real nice dial that looks like it's easy to read. Lufkin made very quality tools so be on the watch out for them they haven't made precision tools for over 50 years now they just make tape rulers and zigzag rulers this old federal indicator was given to me fairly recently and the unique thing about it look in red it says Packard Motor Car Company and it has only a range of about an eighth of an inch or less a little bit sluggish needs to be cleaned this is Mr. Ron Brown who gave me the indicator and here we are at Arnfest about a year ago and he is holding the indicator. Thanks Ron. I have no intentions whatsoever in showing you how to use these indicators. This is meant to be a short video. Now let's switch to talking about test indicators. Test indicators are great for doing inspections because generally they have a higher resolution like to a half a thousandth or a tenth of a thousandth. But everything that I'm telling you is a, a generality because there are indicators that break those little rules that I just talked about. These indicators do not have a very large range, usually about 30 thousandths. But these antique test indicators right here only have a range of, oh, in this case, four thousandths on either side of zero. And these were in use a long time ago. As I say, these are antiques, maybe before dial indicator, but I'm not really sure. And I've got several different kinds, and I have shown these in videos over the years. Again, this one has a range of, well, ten thousandths on either side of zero, or a total of twenty thousandths. And some place here, I believe I have a little Sterrett. Yeah, this is a Sterrett, probably from the 1930s. Now, I'm not going to take the cover off of this one. You see a patent date on there, I can't even read it. 
but they do not have a rack and pinion. They operate with levers. So when you move the probe or the tip here, various levers are actuated. And when you see this one here, it has a little dovetail cover that I'm going to pull off here, off camera, and then show you what it looks like inside because the general principle is true with these as well. And all of them on the table, as a matter of fact, levers. Okay, this little test indicator that I'm going to show now was owned by Dave Clark of the Dave Clark 5 before he became a musician. But imagine that you can just take the little cover off here with your fingernail, kind of tight actually, and that little cover, believe it or not, is a dovetail. Notice that it can be used in two different ways here, off to the side or plunger type on the other end. So it's really pretty amazing from about 1906. But you can, as you can see, there's springs and levers and arms and so on. No rack and pinion. You know, there are people out there that do not like the stare at last word indicator, but it's been one of my favorites. Actually, it is my favorite. Here's the more traditional one that reads to one thousandth. But this other one here has a resolution of a tenth of a thousandth. And these are all reversible as well. And the dials will turn and can be zeroed out. This is a very nice one. I don't think I ever used this one yet, but this particular one comes with all kinds of accessories and doodads that makes it very, very useful. Test indicators generally are smaller than dial indicators and they can reach into tight spots and so on. So that makes them real handy. But generally they have smaller dials that are relatively difficult to read. But again, the rule is broken here because this one has a little bit larger dial than what we typically see on test indicators. And this is a brown and sharp. And another thing I wanted to show you and this only reads to a thousandth. You would think it would be a tenth of a thousandth. But most of these are held onto the indicator holder or the stand by dovetail. So you get a dovetail rail right there, there, and on the back side. This one has seen heavy use by Ray Downs. Now this is a peacock. They are very good indicators. Again, a stem and a dovetail rail on the bottom. Here's a little beauty, quite compact. And the brand is Best Test. That's brown and sharp. Most of my tools had previous owners with the names on them. Looking at this Sterrett catalog, there are over 30 pages of indicators. And each page is chocked full of different styles and different models. And it just goes on and on, test indicators and dial indicators and all of the accessories. And you may, there's the last word, you may want to look through the catalog and study this because there is very factual information here, not just advertising, that would help you if you need to know something about indicators such as this gray part here is very interesting to read shows you the inside of the indicators and now we are into the pages where I told you they have a lot of different dials depending on what you are doing in your factory this probably does not apply to you guys working in your basement because we just need one or two indicators for general purposes well, that concludes this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure and watch some of my others. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. You may wish to watch this video of mine, How a Dial Indicator Works. I'll put the link in the description.